Okay, good evening everyone. Once again, it's Mohammed El Mala from uh, Ocala, Florida. Uh, we're doing a weekly uh, live stream of cataract surgery combined with uh, possibly some uh, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery uh, as well as uh, different techniques or innovations that show up or that have come across uh, my path. Um, I'm also entertaining requests as far as if anyone has anything they want to see or has questions about a particular technique. Um, the case I chose uh, to show you today is a uh, white mature cataract and management of the white uh, mature cataract. For ophthalmologists and um, for surgeons, whenever we hear about a white mature cataract, we worry about uh, something called the Argentinian flag sign, where basically <clears throat> uh, we get anterior capsular runoff in the beginning of the case. It can make the rest of the case um, very difficult to do. And the reason it's called the Argentinian flag sign is because the capsule is usually stained with a blue dye, and then the cataract behind the capsule is white, and then you get a, a line across the middle that's white uh, with uh, anterior capsule runoff on both uh, sides. Um, I posted a video of this a few years ago, and I think I, I traumatized everyone because it basically shows two cases where you incise the capsule, and, um, and immediately the capsule runs off. <clears throat> Both those cases were in patients who had silicone oil in the eye. And as you know, silicone oil uh, rises. And so when a patient is supine, the silicone oil is exerting posterior pressure. So in cases where you have silicone oil uh, in the uh, posterior chamber, for example, for patients who have uh, chronic retinal detachments or difficult retinal detachments or retinal detachments that were difficult to repair, they're going to have um, silicone oil. They may have silicone oil in the eye. <clears throat> and going into the case, you should be prepared uh, to have anterior capsular runoff if the silicone oil is still in the eye. These patients may have a white mature cataract, and as soon as you incise the capsule, uh, you may very well uh, get the Argentinian flag sign. However, I feel that this sign is actually uh, does not happen as often as, as uh, people think. So I'm going to show you a case here where... Um, we're doing a white mature cataract. This is a patient who uh, has count fingers vision in this eye. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we'll play the video. Uh, you can see that the, the pupil is dilated. You're looking directly at the cataract. You can see that it's uh, basically opaque. Uh, this is done under topical anesthesia. So the patient is able to move the eye. The patient is comfortable, and they don't feel anything with the surgery. And here we are, just getting prepping things and making sure we're comfortable and things uh, look uh, pretty before we start the case. I'm going to fast forward here to the actual beginning of the case. Let's see here. All right. So we start out uh, like we normally do um, by making a side port incision. I use a cotton tip sponge uh, to stabilize the globe during this part of the procedure. Uh, we then inject 1% um, preservative-free lidocaine. <clears throat> and we got some bubbles with that, which is not a big deal, because the next thing we're going to do is inject uh, an air bubble. Here I am just removing some lashes uh, that were uh, showing through the drape. Uh, lashes carry bacteria, and so since that's close to where my incision is and where I'm going to be placing instruments, I don't want those lashes to be there. So we're just spending a few um, minutes here or seconds just removing those lashes. <clears throat> so the next step will be to stain the anterior capsule. We're first of all going to inject air. Uh, to fill the anterior chamber. This helps to prevent the dye from touching the corneal endothelium or, or being exposed for a long period of time to the corneal endothelium. Some people don't use the air bubble, and I think that's that's fine as well. Here, this is a blue dye that we place. <clears throat> we'll let that sit just for a few seconds. We already get it out from the surface of the eye. And then we go directly in with our dispersive viscoelastic, which in this case is visco. So we go in with viscoat, which will displace the dye, as well as the uh, air bubble from the anterior chamber. And we fill the anterior chamber with, uh, with the dispersive uh, viscoelastic.
Okay, the anterior chamber is now pressurized uh, because this patient is on the topical and the globe can move. I like to fixate the, glo the globe by grabbing the uh, paracentesis with 0.12 forceps. And then we enter the anterior chamber with our main incision. This is a 2.4 millimeter keratome blade. We then go in with a cystotome. And in previous cases where I'd shown the Argentinian flat sign, I basically incise the anterior capsule here and immediately we get uh, anterior capsule runoff in both directions. And you see here this is not the case. So we're able to um, incise the anterior capsule. I'm not decompressing the lens uh, or doing other maneuvers. I'm not going. In. Sometimes you can go in first with a um, maybe a 27 gauge needle and aspirate some cortical material to decrease the pressure inside the eye. I do not do that here. Um, I'm trying out these new uh, uh, Etrata forceps that uh, seem to have worked pretty well uh, for us. They're marked at 2.5 and 5 millimeter. Uh, I saw these on uh, one of uh, Dr. Debgen's uh, videos and figured we'd try them out here and I like them. I actually like our current for, uh, Etrata forceps um, really well but we're having a hard time getting them and I found these are a nice uh, substitute. But these allow you to, to precisely grab the capsule uh, rectus exactly where you want to grab it. You can actually start the capsule rectus using these forceps and they have a nice mark of five millimeters, which helps orient you and orient the size of the capsule rectus. You can see there the capsule rectus went very well, very smoothly. We were nice and slow and deliberate. We didn't see any runoff. Now we're hydro dissecting, um, which is I still do in these white mature cataracts, even though the cortical material is usually pretty already is already fairly liquefied and the lens is mobile. So I hydro dissect and I make um, a an attempt there at hydro delineation. <coughs> And now I go in with the FACO probe, and we, uh, as we do for our regular cataracts, we make a central uh, core. Uh, we carve out a central core on our first mode uh, in, in FACO. This is using the Bosch and Lom uh, Stellaris, uh, Stellaris machine. And then I go to, to my next mode uh, with my um, chopper, and my next mode is a burst mode, which has uh, fixed, which has fixed. Um, vacuum, I'm sorry, has fixed the uh, FACO, um, and then we chop. Uh, so the burst mode has fixed FACO, and as you push down the pedal, the FACO uh, intervals come closer and closer, but the FACO power is constant. And then I go in the second instrument, I do a horizontal chop, I rotate and make a second horizontal chop, and then we're able to remove our first piece. Uh, you can see here sometimes as these cataracts mature more and more, they'll be very leathery and they'll have a, you'll be able to be hard to separate them. That's not the case here. Uh, there's no posterior plate here that's kind of holding everything together. Uh, the, that, that quadrant came out nice, nice and easily. And you'll see that the nucleus here rotates um, quite readily. So we engage uh, this half and then we make another chopping maneuver and we were able to remove another quadrant. I probably have my FACO setting here. I would I would imagine that at uh, ultrasound power of 30. Um, I, my, my normal ultrasound power is a 25, and for more um, dense lenses, I go to 30. I've tried, I sometimes go up to 35, but as we go up in power, we get more chatter uh, of the of the nuclear pieces, meaning the nuclear pieces don't stay at the tip quite as well and they may uh, come off and then they're bouncing around the anterior chamber causing endothelial damage, you get more corneal edema uh, on post op day one, it can take longer for the cornea to heal. So the case is progressing nicely, we're continuing to chop and remove pieces. I'm keeping my second instrument here behind um, my phaco tip uh, in case we do get the posterior capsule coming forward. Uh, this is a chopper which has a blunt tip, but nonetheless, I'm still worried about piercing the posterior capsule. So I rotate uh, the chopper on its side, so we see the flat uh, side is against the posterior capsule should the posterior capsule come up. And here we're doing the last piece, so we're going nice and slow here uh, with our FACO and just watching as things move. There's a little bit of a posterior plate there, um, and there's some FACO pieces at the incision, so we remove those. That posterior plate comes out nicely with the FACO, and once again, I'm able to do that maneuver because I have my second instrument in protecting the posterior capsule. So um, we're done with FACO emulsification. We've removed the nuclear material. I irrigate the uh, side port incision, and that's just to remove any uh, nuclear fragments that may be in the side port, and then makes it, makes them easier to remove. 
with the IA. Uh, so here is the IA or the irrigation aspiration and we're removing the cortical material that's still present that's in the capsular fornix and you can see there actually is quite a bit here. Often with these white cataracts you may not find any uh, cortical material remaining but this patient still has some cortical material. So we spend our time here with irrigation aspiration. We reach into the fornix and pull these pieces centrally. Um, we're maintaining a nice deep chamber. The posterior capsule is staying back. Um, some patients can have very floppy uh, posterior capsules, which we experienced this week, and the capsule just wants to continue to come forward. But this patient has good um, zonular strength. There's, we don't see any evidence of any zonular laxity or posterior capsule laxity here. And we continue just to work our way around and do irrigation aspiration and clean things up so this patient can get a nice result and a nice outcome from surgery. The more material you leave in the eye, uh, the more um, inflammation you'll have post-operatively. So it looks like there's some sub there's some subincisional material there that I think I end up um, leaving until after I put in the intraocular lens. <clears throat> yeah, so I make, I make some more attempts here removing that subincisional material and eventually I end up just leaving it. Um, I don't want to struggle too much subincisionally because um, that can come out quite readily once you have the intraocular lens in place. The intraocular lens serves as a nice scaffold to, um, to protect the posterior capsule. Okay, so I did post a post posterior capsule there with a the silicone tipped IA and now we're filling the capsule with a cohesive um, viscoelastic and we're injecting uh, the lens. Um, we're using a wound assist maneuver here and this is a um, hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens, a one-piece lens, which is going to go into the uh, into the capsular bag. Well, I use a Lester forceps just to free up the haptics from the IOL before I go in with the irrigation aspiration probe to remove the rest of the of the viscoelastic. When I go in with the IA, I'm going to go in behind the intraocular lens. And we're going to remove the, remove the viscoelastic from behind the lens uh, first, and then from and then from in front of the lens. And then we're going to ro rotate um, the intraocular lens around. Um, remember that piece of subincisional cortical material that we saw there. As we rotate these haptics around, that that's going to free up that subincisional cortical material, any remaining cortical material that may be there. Good, and we're just spending our time making sure that everything is nice and clean. We don't have any viscoelastic or or lens material still remaining. Very good. You can see there's something there that I'm trying to uh, remove subincisionally still. But nonetheless, you know, the cataract is out. We have a nice uh, capsule rexus that's nice and round with no extensions or runoffs and no tags, and you can see the intraocular lens is, it was, is going to be nicely overlapped for 360 degrees. Here I'm rotating the IOL actually uh, counterclockwise rather than clockwise, and the reason I'm doing that here is because I'm using the haptics to to um, mechanically remove any cork material that may still be present in the capsular fornix. And you can see that there was a subincisional cork material was still there, you can't really see it in the video, but it just came out. Uh, or is about to come out here with this uh, IA maneuver. We check the uh, the side port incision, make sure there's still no remnants of any material there, and then we come out, and all that's left to do is hydrate our wounds. So this patient did quite well. Um, still, while the patient was in the operating room, I was able to have her count fingers. She was able to report that her vision had already improved. And that's really what's so satisfying and gratifying about doing these white cataracts is you're able to have patients see better uh, immediately while they're still in the operating room. Um, so we check the uh, anterior chamber pressure, intraocular pressure with the back of the 30 gauge cannula. And once we get it to the pressure that we like, then we check the incisions and make sure that they are both uh, watertight. Okay. 
Okay, so push on the side of the, of the globe. And that's really about it. We'll remove the lit speculum and then we're going to remove the drapes from the patient and check the patient's um, vision. So um, this is a case of a white uh, mature cataract. Um, you can see that uh, some of them can actually come out uh, fairly uh, straightforward. I think in, um, in assessing these patients preoperatively, it's important to make sure that there's no lens movement. Uh, what can make these cases quite difficult is if there's any zonular laxity and that completely changes the surgical plan um, and where you're going to put the intraocular lens and what kind of lens you can use. So that's really important to know beforehand. The other thing to get a good idea for is just looking inside, uh, looking at looking with the slit lamp and trying to figure out whether this is, um, you know, what the stage of the cataract is. Sometimes a white cataract can be just a white fluffy cataract, or sometimes it can be a mature cataract that's denser, and sometimes it can be a morganian cataract where you just see a black thick um, uh, nuclear nucleus floating around in an otherwise liquefied cortex. Um, these cases can be done under topical, as uh, as many surgeons do, and as was demonstrated in this last case. Um, if at all you're not comfortable, these patients should be uh, should you should do a block if you worry about the patient moving or not being able to control the globe. Uh, if you feel that the capsule is um, is um, under a lot of pressure or there's a lot of pressure inside the capsule, then you should aspirate with uh, perhaps a 27 or 30 30 gauge needle. Um, prior to incising the, uh, uh, with, with the uh, uh, cystitome. But these are all things that you, know, you can consider whenever you're doing these white mature cataracts. Uh, if it's, watch, you need to watch out for having a um, posterior uh, plate or having a leathery uh, uh, lens, uh, which can be more difficult to chop, uh, in which case you may need to do some more grooving. But these patients can have, uh, can have a great outcome um, and can do quite well. So white mature cataracts, um, patients can have a great outcome um, and uh, they are some of the most uh, gratifying patients to take care of because they can have a quick improvement. So um, I'm going to continue to do these uh, live streams once a week. If you have things you'd like to see or, or uh, things you'd like to learn more about or uh, different techniques uh, that you have or want to you know, feel free to comment. Uh, these videos are going to be on YouTube as well. Um, and you can comment here. Um, or on any other platforms and we'll take a look and, and change it as, ne as needed. So it's Sunday. I hope everyone has a good week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you for watching.